Yacht A, my relatives. Today is December 31st of 2021, the final day of the year, and I'm sitting down for one last second cup of coffee before the year end. Um, I wanted to just jump on and talk about a few things before we, the, the year completes, and I wanted mainly just to say thank you and, and let everyone know how much appreciated uh, you're joining me for these cups of coffee this past year, and I'm really looking forward to the upcoming year. I've been talking with some uh, partners and what we're going to try to be doing over the next year, and I'm pretty excited about the things uh, coming down the line. But before I begin, let me do as I always do, which is acknowledge that I'm speaking to you today from what's now known as Washington, D.C., and these are the traditional lands of the Piscataway. And I want to acknowledge that the Piscataway are still here. I want to thank the Piscataway for their stewardship of these lands. And I want to just state how humbled I am to be living on these lands today. Um, yeah, I, I didn't have a whole lot I wanted to uh, to discuss today. I, I see Gigi is on board, are online with us right now. So yeah, hey Gigi, it's good to have you here. Um, I think there's a few more other people joining in. So I'm kind of trying to keep an eye on the comments of who jumps on. But yeah, as we go into this last few hours of 2021, I wanted to end with a few thoughts. First, I wanted to talk about the massacre at Wounded Knee. And I see, I think it's Adam just came on. Good to see you, Adam. Thanks for joining from Hickory Apache, uh, Comanche, Kiowa, and Arapaho lands. It's good to have you here. Um, but I wanted to talk briefly about uh, the anniversary we had just two days ago, which was the 131st anniversary of the massacre at Wounded Knee. And I did a post on my on my social media, not only lamenting this act, this massacre, but also uh, calling um, for the Remove the Stain Act to be passed, which was the the rescinding of the 20 Congressional Medals of Honor that the U.S. Congress awarded to the soldiers who participated in the massacre. And I wanted to uh, share with you a tweet. I, I gave this tweet, actually it was a year ago, it was in 2020, but it had a picture of the memorial at Wounded Knee. And so I put that up onto my Twitter right now. And I also wanted to share a post that um, I, I used during my campaign when I was running for president back in 2020. Um, and this is from my campaign blog and it's titled In Their Own Words. And uh, when we took a trip, a uh, campaign trip to South Dakota, and we spent some time there, we actually visited Wounded Knee, and I took some pictures. I had been there before, but I took some pictures of the memorial and the plaque that they have hanging there, and I transcribed those plaques onto this post, and I put it up. And the reason I did that is because it's so important, not only that we remember these events and these anniversaries and lament them and mourn them and work to find a way to move forward. But it's important that we allow those who were on the receiving end of these horrific acts to tell us this history in their own words. And so uh, I, I posted the words that are on that plaque um, because this is what uh, the, the Dakota people had to say about Wounded Knee. Um, it's in their own words, and I wanted to get that up. And so there's an, a blog post that I put onto, I ran it during my campaign, but it was a way to uh, give voice to um, the people on Pine Ridge as they lamented and remembered and mourned the massacre at Wounded Knee. Um, and you may have remembered, if we go back a little bit to the 2020 election, that this was a very it was a very unique campaign for president because there were two fairly major Native American forums. Um, the largest was in um, August of 2019, and it was the Frank Lemire Native American Presidential Forum. It was really the first kind of top tier candidate level forum for Native peoples and Native issues that our nation has ever had. 
Um, and I remember hearing about it very early on and received an invitation to it uh, not too long after we announced our campaign. I forget exactly what month it was, but I knew it was coming up and I was very excited to be able to participate in it. And it was good to see all the other candidates who were joining in on that on that uh, forum. Uh, Bernie Sanders was there. Julian Castro was there. Elizabeth Warren was there. Uh, Cory Booker was there. I think Kamala Harris was there. Um, or maybe she would, did video. I forget exactly. Um, uh, there were a few others there. Um, Amy Klobuchar was there. Uh, there was one or two Republicans who were there. Donald Trump. It was it was very notable though because the two candidates who ended up in the general election, Donald Trump and Joe Biden, didn't show up at that forum. And at that forum, right there was this incredible woman, um, Marcelle Lebu, who passed away. I, I spoke about this. She passed away a few months ago. Um, and uh, she was there. And she was not just there to listen to what these candidates had to say. And, and Marcella is an amazing woman. I had the chance to meet her. I, I got to talk with her. And she was there um, as... She was 99 years old at the time, and she was a World War II veteran. Uh, she served as a nurse in World War II. And she was there asking the candidates about the Remove the Stain Act. She was asking them directly, where do you stand on rescinding these medals of honor that were given to these people who participated in the massacre of Wounded Knee. And she forced every candidate to take a position on it. And of course, at the Native Forum, um, I think almost all the candidates took the position of, yes, we have to rescind, remove these, these uh, medals. So it's striking that the two top candidates, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, didn't show up and didn't take a strong position speaking to Native peoples to our faces and take a stand on this issue. They didn't show up. And so if you're wondering where the energy for the Remove the Stain Act has gone, why is that not something we're talking about near as prevalently now? Well, because look who we elected, right? We elected Joe Biden, who didn't even bother to come to the largest Native American presidential forum in the history of this nation. Didn't even bother to come. Twice he didn't come. I think he sent a letter the first time and he sent a video the second time. And so, of course, we're not going to be talking about these issues, right? He's a status quo candidate. He's a status quo president. He's not going to address these things head on. And not only is he a status quo candidate, but he's the status quo candidate that our nation elected, right? So our nation elected a candidate who did not take a bold stand on this issue and did not make a direct promise of what would be done with these medals. And so it's no surprise that there's dissipating energy for the Remove the Stain Act. But this is something we can't forget. This is something that we have to continue to press forward on. This is something that we really need to continue to address. Um, if you're not, if you don't know all of the history of Wounded Knee, we've addressed it in our book, On Settling Truths, The Ongoing Dehumanizing Legacy of the Doctrine of Discovery. I've also written fairly extensively about it. And one of my most recent articles, this was written in 2018, it was published on Indian Z, um, was titled, The United States Continues to Honor War Crimes at Wounded Knee. And it really goes into depth about how, um, and it makes the comparison between us and Nazi Germany where both these nations were committing genocidal acts. And because Nazi Germany lost their war, they have been working to rid themselves of those horrific attitudes and mentalities. And because the United States won its war against Indian country, against native peoples, completed its manifest destiny, it honors those events, those genocidal and ethnic cleansing events with medals of honor. And so it really kind of paints the picture of, of what 
how deep this this issue really is. And so I encourage people to continue to educate themselves about wounded knee, to learn and understand what really happened there, and to not allow our nation not only to forget this horrific act, but do not let the movement to remove the stain, to rescind these medals of honor, don't let that stop. And if you've read our book, right, we point out that it's not only these 20 congressional medals of honor that were awarded specifically for wounded knee, but if you look back over the history of Indian wars, in my research, I found there were actually 425 medals of honor given between 1839 and 1898, I think were the years, for the Indian war campaigns as our nation was working to ethnically cleanse and remove natives and complete its manifest destiny. So we awarded 425 medals of honor. I think all of these medals need to be rescinded, not just the 20 for wounded knee, but all 425. We do not honor, we do not celebrate, we do not condone genocide as a nation. Well, we do. We don't. I mean, we <laughs> we shouldn't, but we do. We do condone it. We do honor it. We do commemorate it with 425 medals of honor, and we need to change that. We need to rescind those medals. We need to stop honoring these horrific acts. Anyway, that's the larger conversation that's going on right now. And I, I want to, I just want to remind people, I didn't say a whole lot um, on, on the 29th about Wounded Knee. I did make a few posts. I didn't do um, a live stream or a second cup of coffee that day, but I was deeply contemplating it and thinking through some of these issues. And really, I, I'm, I haven't, as I, we we're coming to the close of 2021, I've been really pondering and thinking about what do I want to do in this next year, right? 2022 is a midterm election year. Um, there's a lot of important congressional and governor and, and state legislator uh, campaigns going on. And I really want to make sure that we find a way to, to um, influence the dialogue in our nation about these things. And what are the things we talk about, such as remove the stain act, such as um, the fact that we honor genocide as a nation and we need to stop doing that. And so I, I, I'm, such as our need for a national dialogue on race, gender, and class, um, such as the need to decenter whiteness and, and do all the things that we need to do as a nation. And so I'm looking at what do I wanna do because I'm not campaigning for anything right now, what do I wanna do in the next year? to help make sure these points and these topics um, continue to grow in the public uh, dialogue and in the national dialogue and in kind of the public arena. And so I'm looking for what I wanna do. A lot of it will be done here virtually on my YouTube channel, uh, through social media, right? As we see with Omicron right now, um, COVID-19 is not going anywhere quickly. And so uh, I'm really uh, kind of gearing up for probably another year of very few in-person speaking events and really trying to make sure that I can be as robust as possible with my online speaking, my virtual speaking, not only for, for paid events, but also for my own platforms, my second cups of coffee, um, live streams about our book on selling truths and stuff like that. And so uh, I'm making some plans of how I want to do that and what I want to work on that and do um, and even beginning to readjust some of my expectations of how many paid speaking events I'll get this next year. Already, I've had a few things postponed for early in January and February because of Omicron and um, what's been going on. So, yeah, I'm, I'm making some plans and I'll be talking about that very early in the year, probably beginning next week. I'm gonna um, take some time over the weekend to make some changes to my website and get some stuff ready that I want to be doing and hopefully make some, some new announcements and some new things moving forward. But I wanna just, as we come to the year, I want to thank everyone for all the times that you joined me 
for my second cup of coffee. I want to thank you for the, the opportunity we've had to have some dialogue here. I want to thank people like uh, Mo Burgess and uh, others who have joined me so frequently. Gigi's on here again. Uh, Barbara Bartelson is on here. Uh, Christine Hansen, Daryl Anderson. Um, there's a lot of people, Cheryl Ann Lewis, uh, who are regulars and joining me each morning or each day for my second cup of coffee whenever we do it. And I really appreciate everyone who's been here, who's engaged in these dialogues, who's posed some questions or who's listened to these things and tried to amplify some of this message and some of this, some of this narrative. And I, wanna, I want you to know how deeply I appreciate what you've been doing. And I want you to know that I'm looking of, for ways that we can make this even more intentional. Um, and we're going to be working especially on ways that we can promote things more on social media. I just met with um, uh, uh, some my, my assistant of making some plans for how we can make our social media promotion of stuff more robust and more regular. And I'm look, looking through of how I can get more kind of um, organized or uh, be more intentional with topics as well as with even guests on my second cup of coffee and creating more of a schedule and hopefully having them more at regular times and, and even on regular days throughout the week. So yeah, there's a lot of things we wanna to do to hopefully grow the audience of the second cup of coffee, grow the audience of my YouTube channel and find a way to use this platform to drive and, and influence the more national dialogue and national narrative that's going on, but it's all of this is made possible by you, by your willingness to join and to be a part of the conversation. I see Phil Fox is now on here. Great to have you, Phil. I really appreciate all your help that you've done in this past year to help me moderate some stuff and promote different things. So thank you. Um, yeah, so that's, I'm looking forward to 2022. I think it's going to be a really good year. Um, I'm, I am gearing up to be, continue to be virtual. Um, as you know, I announced it earlier this week that one of our children uh, tested positive for COVID and uh, this was on Christmas Eve. And so we actually had to have um, an isolation room in our house and uh, kind of keep um, our child there for most of the week. Um, did a lot of things virtually over over video and phone calls, including watching movies and went outside to open presents and some stuff. It changed our plans, but thankfully her symptoms were mild and uh, she's now fully recovered. Just got a, a second test um, uh, that came back negative yesterday, I think it was. And so um, tomorrow is really the 10 days that they recommend you isolate and quarantine for or at least you wear mask everywhere you go. And so we're gonna kind of have more of a celebration tomorrow when she can join us at the di dinner table and not have to eat virtually um, in, a, in her own room separate from us. So we're really looking forward to doing some fun things tomorrow as a family, just still home, but in our own house, but enjoying having all of us back together in the same room again. Um, but I, I wanna use that as a reminder to people to continue to take this virus seriously. Right, our family, as you know, has been very cautious with the virus. We haven't done much travel. Um, all, myself and my children are very um, strict about mask wearing, um, and yet we even got infected. And so thankfully my daughter was fully vaccinated. And so her symptoms were very mild. Mostly she had a sore throat, but uh, um, I want to encourage people to continue to wear masks, to continue to social distance, if you have not gotten a vaccination or a booster yet, I highly encourage you to consider doing that. Um, I know everyone needs to make your own decision, but I highly encourage you to consider um, getting vaccinated. And if you've been vaccinated, to consider getting boosted. Um, I also want to encourage people, we've had to up our mask game since uh, Omicron has come out. I've, For most of the pandemic, I've been wearing a cloth mask that I wash every day. Um, I didn't want to have disposable masks that were filling up landfills. But um, with Omicron, as I've done more research and found that um, cloth masks are not nearly as effective against Omicron. Um, and they're highly recommending people have uh, better filtration on their masks. And so we bought both some 
N95 masks, which is the, the US standard for the high filtration. And we bought some KN95 masks, which are, I think they're the Chinese standard um, for the same filtration level. And so we've really upped our mask game here in our house. And uh, this is what we wear whenever we go out now to the grocery store or um, to whenever we're out in public, we wear these masks. These are the masks that our kids will be wearing when they go back to school on Wednesday. And so I want to uh, encourage you to consider upping your mask game as well. And to, if you've been wearing cloth masks, especially to consider getting um, some better filtration masks that will do a better job of not only protecting you, but of protecting those most vulnerable around you. So yeah, let's end this year well. And especially if you're thinking of having gatherings tonight for New Year's Eve, I want to encourage you to please be cautious. Um, not only with COVID-19, but obviously with uh, drinking and driving. Um, you know, I, 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 uh, there's always a lot of damage done to communities um, because of DUIs and drunk drivers. And so I want to encourage people, if you're out celebrating tonight, to please have a designated driver or to please take an Uber or some other way to get home. Um, please do not drive if you have been drinking. Um, please be cautious and and respectful of your life and of the life of everyone around you. Um, because when these things happen, they're not only devastating on a personal level, but they're devastating at a community level um, because of how senseless uh, DUI deaths and accidents are. And so I highly encourage people to be very cautious tonight as you celebrate the new year. Um, let me look through my comments and see if there's anything. Uh, Gigi's asking, are there washable N95 type masks or KN95? I have not found any yet if there are. Um, I think because they of the way they filter out, I have not found washable KN95 masks or N95 masks. Um, doesn't mean they don't exist, but I have not found them yet. Um, I, I, uh, yeah, the, the N95 masks that I ended up buying were from 3M, and I actually got them at Home Depot. And then the KN95 masks, uh, I forget, Wardell, I think was the brand I got. I forget exactly, but um, I got them off of Amazon. Um, and uh, so anyway, yeah, I have not found out if there are washable masks with that level of filtration. Um, but I will tell you, wearing the N95 and the KN95, you definitely feel more shielded, right? It's a little harder to breathe. You're a bit more kind of locked in in your mask, um, but you definitely feel a bit safer as you're out there. So if people have other other things, please feel free to share that with me. But in, I encourage you to consider um, upping your mask game this next, uh, this next few weeks. Um, let me look through if there's anything else going on in here. In my comments, um, someone wrote a very long essay. I'm not sure who it is. Uh, Gigi put something in there. I haven't had a chance to read that whole thing. Um, but uh, let me look if there's any other comments in here. Um, Tam Marshall, making fry bread and soup. Uh, my family lost a lot of family this last year back on the reservation. Our youth suicide rates have skyrocketed, just lost two young teens in the last week. That's a very important point, Tam, and I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, there's been a lot of articles, a lot of evidence of um, how damaging this pandemic has been, especially on our youth. And so if you have young people in your life, I encourage you to make sure you have good lines of communication with them. Make sure you're checking in on them. I know it's it's so easy just to let them kind of live online and watch their YouTube and do the stuff that they're doing. And we've all been doing in this pandemic. But we need to make sure that we are actively and proactively communicating with the young people in our lives checking in to make sure they're doing, getting them out and getting them exercise and, and getting them physical interaction with people as well in safe ways. But I appreciate your reminder for that, Tam, because we definitely need to make sure that our young people are healthy psychologically. Um, uh, so thank you for that reminder. A lot of people saying uh, Happy New Year. Uh, Happy New Year, Julie Mendoza. Um, appreciate you being on here. 
Mary Myers, I couldn't participate uh, live once in person. School started in the fall, but I would see later. I think you're, she's commenting to someone else. I'm not sure what that means, but great to have you on here, Mary. Thanks for being here. Um, Mary Saracino, Happy New Year, Mark. Thank you. Happy New Year, Mary. Um, Phil Fox, blessings, family. Um, Martha wrote, greetings to you, Mark Charles. I honor you and all who try to be present to present the true Native people's ordeals, conditions that are beyond belief. I pray that someday soon the Native people are treated equally. I am too elderly to be of real help, but I truly do all that is possible to make the journey. I appreciate your allyship, Martha. Thank you for joining me for this cups of coffee. And I appreciate you being a part of the dialogue that we're having here. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for joining me today. Thank you for joining me this past year. I haven't done a, um, a uh, sunrise in a few days. It actually feels it's been very cloudy and very overcast every morning. I think towards the end of next week, we're finally going to have a few clear mornings. So I'm hoping to do, um, actually, I think Tuesday we have a clear morning. I'll be able to go out and watch the sunrise then. But uh, yeah, I just want to say one last um, hat and thank you everybody. I really appreciated and enjoyed sharing my second cups of coffee with you in 2021. And I've enjoyed watching the sunrise with you in 2021. And I'm looking forward to having many more cups of coffee, many more important dialogues, a lot more guests on this, uh, on this thing, as well as uh, many more sun sunrises in the next year in 2022. So I my relatives. Thank you very much. Walk in beauty. And I pray that as we go into this new year, we will learn how to walk in beauty together. Huck on that. Oh, one last thing. <laughs> I forgot. I was going to share this as well. Um, if you would like to uh, purchase a signed copy of my book. I will put a link for that into the uh, thing right here. I'm I'm looking forward to finding ways to expand the audience for our book in this next year. And I'm going to be doing some very intentional things to not just uh, um, go to the same places we've been going in the past, but really to try to break into new audiences and new platforms to get more awareness of this book and hopefully use it to push the more national dialogue about these things. So if you've read the book, I encourage you to share it, let people know. If you've read the book, I encourage you to go online, either on Amazon or Goodreads or somewhere else and review it. Um, the more reviews our books get in these places, um, the better uh, people can hear about it and know about what's in the book and the content of it. So yeah, thank you for all of you who have bought the book, um, either for myself or other places. Thank you for people who have shared it and have helped promote it. I really appreciate that. I'm really excited to see what we can do to use this book to push the dialogue forward in the next year. So anyway, that's it. I can't have my relatives, but go net, walk in beauty, and maybe learn how to walk in beauty together. <laughs>